Hello everyone, welcome to 3dedesignacademy.com. In this lesson, we'll learn about some of the visualization tools available in Elias. Okay, so we're gonna start by learning about the, some of the shading options available in Elias. So when you first uh, turn on Elias and you import a model or you start modeling, you're gonna see that it's going to be shaded in the shading off so you're going to see the wireframes but you're not going to get any shading and you won't be able to see how the surfaces actually appear now one of the most basic um, shading options that you can use is the multicolor diagnostic shader which you can see right here so when you click it the default color is gray now you can of course uh, increase the accuracy of the representation of this all right, with the sacrifice in performance, you can reduce the tolerance to 0 0.01 and increase the tessellator to accurate. Now you can't really see it in this environment because it's all gray, but you'll see more of it when you use um, this particular user-defined texture diagnostic shader. Okay, so uh, with this shader, you can also change the color if you want. So let's say you don't like the gray because the background is already gray. You can click on this and you can choose different colors. Let's say you want to make it orange or even darker gray. You can just click on it in order to change the color. And let's say you want to make it, I don't know, let's pick blue, some blue. And you can also change the color. Now, let's say you want to make a particular set of surfaces a different color. You can also do that. All you have to do is pick the object, um, pick the surfaces, or pick the surfaces by uh, picking as an object. For example, I'll just uh, click on the headlight here, and let's say I want to turn them green. You can change the color this way. However, let's say you want your you don't have anything selected, and you just change the color like this it's gonna revert everything back to uh, the color that you picked. So do if you're trying to do this, do be careful. But let's say uh, you, so this should only be used as a quick representation when you want to separate the cards a little bit, but let's say you want to do a more permanent uh, color change, then it is a, um, there are other rendering settings and shadings that you can use. Okay, so that's it for multicolor diagnostic shader, and we'll move on to the next one, random color diagnostic shader. Now, basically this one uh, just is, um, colors all the surfaces of different colors. So you uh, with the shader, you don't really use the shader that much, but it is good to show when you're trying to show like the different surface structure because it colors every surface of different color from the one right next to it. So you'll see that this surface right next to it is a little bit different color than the one next to it. So it's just um, a way of showing different patches. And, and we'll move on to curvature evaluation diagnostic shader. Now, this is a very advanced tool which you can use to analyze the surfaces. So there are like various options. So there's Prince Max, Prince Minimum, Gaussian, mean etc etc but these are surface uh these are evaluation tools to diagnose your the quality of the surfaces uh how much curvature your surface has and things like that so this we will leave uh leave for more advanced tutorials later on now next we have the iso angle diagnosis shader now with this one it is uh, used to evaluate the highlight so right now you can't really see much except for a white line, but you can also change this from a single to either a double, or you can, most people you like to use multiple. And we're gonna increase the number of bands like this. So now you can really see the flow of the surfaces and you see a nice horizontal um, line, especially on the side glass. And uh, it is used to evaluate how smooth the surfaces are and how the transitions from one surface to another is. So it's just a very good tool to check upon if there are any surfaces that might need more tension and make sure that the transitions are smooth. 
So next up is something very similar to ISO angle, but it is called the horizontal vertical diagnostic shader, also called the zebra because of the black and white stripes. Now this one is, it actually moves as you move your cursor. So like the ISO angle tool, it is used to evaluate the smoothness uh, and the uh, smoothness of the surface transitions and make sure that there are no weird kinks uh, in the surface between the several surfaces that are connected. So it's just another good, very useful and quite uh, uh, very widely and often used tool that you can use to check your surfaces and make sure the highlights are flowing well. Okay, um, the next up is a surface evaluation diagnostic, a diagnostic shader. Now this is used to check uh, various aspects of the surfaces, but particularly uh, your drafts. So draft comes in, uh, draft, Evaluation comes handy when you are actually doing production work. So like, let's say you actually want to uh, create a class A surface that is going to be actually stamped out of metal. Or let's say you wanna create an interior piece that is going to be formed in plastic. You have to have draft in order for the surfaces to actually pop out from the die. So uh, this is used to check the draft. Now, right now it's just a mixture of random colors. That is because the normals are flipped. Uh, they're sort of random. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unify all the surface normals and let's see that again. So I just clicked, uh, so this is a, uh, set visual surface orientation tool. So this is kind of like setting the normals on the surfaces. Although I did, um, it is apparently a little bit different from the actual normals of the surface, which we'll discuss later. So the uh, basically it is, uh, you can change. So uh, because the surface has two sides, the outside and the inner, Basically, this tool allows you to set the uh, unified either the outside or the inside. So right now, for example, the blue uh, represents the outside of the surface where the yellow is actually flipped. So you want to just drag it over and make sure that you see all blue from the outside and it is all yellow on the inside. So now, I'll just do it roughly. When we go back, to the surface evaluation tool like this. Oh, uh, when you do this, in order to go back to your regular shading, you actually have to click uh, Control Shift and pick object. I do not know why, but you have to. So we all will just click on this again and surface evaluation tool. So now the surfaces are a little bit more consistent. So right now it's saying that we are measuring the draft from the Z axis. So it just shows that everything on blue, uh, everything shown in blue, you can uh, pull the die from the top. Everything shown in green, you can pull the die from the uh, from the bottom. All the areas in red, basically, it meets fails to meet the minimum one degree draft. So that's what it's showing. Okay, uh, we'll next. Uh, well, next, we'll move on to the user defined. Uh, texture diagnosis shader. So this is also one of the most often widely used shader. So basically it sort of puts the surface in a very reflective kind of chrome-like shader. So you can, I use this very often in order to check the uh, smoothness of the surface and because it is more uh, different, unlike the ISO angle, you can actually see how you can see more clearly how it actually look in a st either the studio environment or let's say if you were to see the car on the street it's just uh, it's just a more better representation of the shading in a more i guess a real environment 
So it just uh, it is just another tool to make sure that all the surfaces are smooth and the transitions between the uh, between the surfaces and the blends are flowing well. And with this one, you can also there are other options too. So there's Photo Horizon, which does a sort of similar thing, except it's a little bit different color. Uh, another one that people uh, use a lot is Shade Sky. So basically, you have the warm color at the bottom. You have the cool, uh, cool color at the top in order to, uh, I guess, mimic a real, more realistic environment. So people use this a lot too in order to check out the actual model, shape of the model. All right. So now that we've uh, gone through the, the basic diagnostic shader, uh, I'll also show you guys how to turn on and off the wireframe. Uh, we've gone through this in the marking menu, but let's do it again. So in order to get rid of the wireframe, in order to actually look at the model as a shape instead of a bunch of surface patches, all you have to do is control shift, right mouse button, and you just have to click on toggle model. And you can see the, uh, the entire model without the wireframes getting in your way. So if you wanna turn it back on, all you have to do is press toggle model again. And there's another key to achieve the same effect. So if you were to press F12, it toggles the model, uh, toggles the wireframe off. And if you press F12 again, it toggles the wireframe on. All right, that is it for visualization. And that concludes this lesson. Thank you for watching.